So uh, basically I'm doing this too for all of my buyers and sellers and anybody else who's interested in uh, understanding how legalities are gonna be working around real estate in this climate. Um, this is Adrian um, and he's a, law, a real estate lawyer. So Adrian, you wanna tell us a little bit about yourself and then we can get into how we can protect our buyers and sellers at this time. People especially who are you know, willing and ready to move forward. Of course. Uh, so everyone, my name is Adrian Suku. I'm the owner of Suku Law Professional Corporation out in Whitby. Uh, I do, as Amal stated, I do real estate, but I also do wills estates, immigration, and civil litigation, corporate services. So um, multiple areas of practice, especially that do come up in this time. I've been practicing for about, uh, going on four years, but been in the legal industry for about 10. Um, and uh, we're still open. We're still working through everything going on right now, and we're all taking the same precautions as uh, most others, working from home, self-isolating, and um, working to work with everybody to try to see if, to make this as least uh, intrusive, or the situation least intrusive to all individuals in Ontario. So, um, Erin, thank you for that. Um, the question I have here for you, which some of my clients have been asking me, is that if they're afraid to come and see you in person, um, how does this process work? Say they want to put an offer. The way I do it is I have uh, Zoom consultations uh, with my buyers, um, take them um, behind the scenes of a realtor, show them properties, do a little bit of a comparables right with them so they see exactly how we do it mm -hmm. um, and if there's any properties they like there's virtual tours available for them to go and see if need be i will go myself take a video of that property and you know um this way they feel a little bit more comfortable that somebody's their eyes and ears and nose <laughs> uh, well <laughs> not even nose but i don't know so <laughs> anyway what i'm trying to say here is um, the other way I do it is with sellers. Again, there is there are photographers and uh, you know people who do Matterport. They would go into their homes and do it so that people who are looking to buy the properties can actually walk through a property virtually. This is the new reality right now. And this is what we're doing. Stagers are still working. Photographers are still working. All, of course, taking cautionary measures such as gloves, uh, sanitizers, not using the washrooms when they're in the property. Um, and so on and so forth. Of course, we're only dealing with people at this point who haven't traveled in the last 14 days and haven't come across people who, uh, who have been traveling and hopefully they're being honest that they don't have any, uh, what do you call, any uh, symptoms. Mm -hmm. So having said that, this is how I'm dealing with it, that when it comes down to putting an offer, it's all virtually done. There is DocuSign, there's AuthentiSign, and uh, of course, uh, meetings like this, explaining them what they're signing on so they fully are aware and understand uh, what they're getting into. Having said this, how is it then from here on, I would normally send you the paperwork to process the transaction and then how do you then deal with the client? Hmm. Um, so it's probably very important for everybody to know that um, law offices are pretty much mostly open. There's a few that have closed, but the majority of us are open. And we're all adapting to what's going on and even working on real estate deals and real estate deals are still closing. Uh, even I myself have a number of real estate deals even going on right now that we're aiming to close within the next you know, few weeks. It hasn't stopped, uh, the real estate industry continues to go. However, uh, I do work with a network of lawyers. We all work to, uh, you know, and communicate and collaborate and figure out ways to kind of get around or not necessarily, not necessarily to try to, you know, prevent the self-isolating, but to try to work with it. And a lot of us have been resorting to the same thing, Zoom meetings, uh, Skype conversation, WhatsApp conversations, or even just telephone conversations. Now, um, a lot of the real estate right now, what, how it's going is that paperwork can be done in one of two ways. One, there can still be a physical meeting between the lawyer and their clients. Um, I have actually provided certain clients and certain individuals uh, the option that I will actually go to their house especially usually in older communities where they actually need that personal response. They cannot come out to meetings or they cannot have, they're not really too computer tech savvy. And therefore they need, um, you know, me to print out the paperwork and go to them. Obviously we take all precautions, nobody's showing symptoms, nobody's traveled. Uh, I'll wear, you know, if I go myself, I wear a mask, gloves and eyeglasses. Uh, and I always let the client know this. We sign all the documents uh, as a standard real estate deal. But one of the other options is the Law Society of Ontario and the Attorney General's Office 
Um, they've, uh, I don't want to say they've, uh, you know, completely avoided the uh, um, rules with regards to commissioning and witnessing documents, but they've um, given a little bit of uh, flexibility with it. And namely that you're able to um, do digital signings. So in those situations, the client would be able to print out the paperwork at home. Uh, they would do a meeting like, like this with um, either Zoom, WhatsApp, or Skype. The lawyer will take notes, obviously, that they're doing this. You'd have to show your ID to the, to the camera so that the lawyer would be able to see it, uh, both sides, make a copy, set, and uh, also sign all the documents and show us uh, that you're signing all the documents. Uh, so usually giving a good camera feed and you know enough to see. Once we see that, those documents should be then shipped over to our office. You know, obviously by that point, usually 24 hours to two, three days, um, we would take a look at the documents and actually say that we witnessed them on the day that uh, we did this, the meeting. So we're still able to do the closings and um, Ontario system for doing real estate closings is pretty much digital on the tier review system. So uh, you're able to, you know, we're able to still close everything and still do either the virtual or the physical, depending on what the client's needs. Oh, I uh, can't hear you. I actually muted myself for oh. background noise because my daughter is listening to crazy music while, you know, I'm trying to work here. <laughs> and I don't blame her. <laughs> That's okay. Completely understandable. So uh, my question was, what about on the day of closings? Um, on the closing date, Normally, the client would come to pick up any key, uh, mailbox keys, uh, um, garage opener, mm -hmm. any such, you know, like that's how it normally works, right? Yeah. So in this case scenario, how are you able to help or do things differently? So in that situation, once again, it can be done in a number of ways. If the clients want the keys on the same day, we can meet the clients that same day and give them the keys. Once again, we still recommend that we, by that point, we've already received the keys at least a day or two beforehand. So the keys should be generally safe to handle. But we still recommend the clients bring a wipe, wipe them down, wipe down our envelope, because all we're really handing them is the keys. When they go into the household, they need to you know, do the same procedures as if they're going to any unique places right now, wipe down the doorknobs, make sure that the place is sound and safe. Now, if a client doesn't want to come in and pick up the keys themselves, we can mail it to them. It's, it's an option that we'll give. Obviously, it has to be a disbursement. We'd have to charge for that. But then you keep, get the keys a couple days after closing. You just need to be aware and be, be acceptable to those conditions. But that shouldn't be a problem. And the keys usually can arrive the next day, uh, especially if you get it before, you know, close off for either Canada Post or uh, UPS or TEDx or whoever you may choose. Okay, thank you. Um, shall we get into a few questions about clauses and conditions that you recommend either from a, uh, to, to a seller or to a buyer? Of course. Okay, so um, I have a few questions here for you. Generally speaking, um, what type of clauses do you recommend um, that I should, say if I'm representing a buyer, Mm -hmm. And I need more time uh, closing, for example, for closing. Uh, during this pandemic, like if I say, say, for example, if the close date is uh, 30 days, but for some reason they are not able to sell their property on time or uh, the, the funds are an issue because of what's going on and we need a longer close date. Is there a way to protect the buyers? Definitely. Um, a number of clauses can be included into the agreement purchase and sale, uh, usually the Schedule A, where it allows both the buyer and the seller to acknowledge, you know, unique circumstances. Now, uh, more often the Schedule A has clauses stating, you know, properties in room swept condition or, um, you know, very standard clauses. But considering what's going on right now, it wouldn't be too, you know, too odd to see a clause similar to what you see in, in more, of, more often than not commercial real estate deals, where uh, you have a rolling closing date, where a closing date can be extended for you know, a certain amount of times with both parties' consent based on current situation. So for example, a clause that I would probably include would have that um, the buyer and the seller agree that there is an extension to, that extension can be um, continued on for the property 
uh, on a, on uh, you know a request by one of the parties in light of the COVID nineteen uh, pandemic situation. Um, and once there's notification, the date can be extended by some odd days. Sometimes people want to give thirty days. Sometimes people want to give one twenty days, depending on the need. Now, the reason why you want to state specifically the COVID-19 is that you don't, you also want to prevent, um, you know, unlimited or unilateral um, continually extending for an unknown amount of time. Situations change for both buyers and sellers. The buyer is also at risk in this situation where the buyer could also financially, you never know if their business could close. And that is actually a situation many people can have right now. But it does not mean that it, that is going to happen, and that's why you have to treat it as there's a possibility that you know we can extend. Just give us the time, give everybody the time to kind of keep moving forward. Okay. Um, say if we need to get out of a, a, a transaction mm -hmm. during, especially during this time, like you said, um, buyers are confident they have uh, the deposit. They've been, um, uh, they have a mortgage approval. Everything's check, check, check. They've sold their property, all is well. They buy the new property. It's not closed yet and they lose their jobs. Hmm. For example, then what? Then in that situation, I'd recommend a clause that actually does take in light uh, financial circumstances. Now, if you are in an industry where that could possibly happen, now there are industries that you know, you're know you more aware that there's a possibility that you may have to switch a job very soon or the finances may not be there. Or you might be in a situation where that might happen right now and you're just kind of working to get back everything going on. Um, a clause in there could have um, stating on you know, based on financing and situational changes. Now, it may not be able to end the agreement of purchase and sale. The agreement of purchase and sale is a binding contract nonetheless, but having a clause in there giving an option for extension. So an extension usually I recommend in that situation for it would be at least three months or 120 days because um, on average, a person could, should be able to find a job within the next three months or at least enough time to find a job. So a clause that I would think about would be, you know, uh, that after, um, if the seller were to, sorry, if the buyer were to uh, require an additional certain day, uh, like 120 days or 20 days to confirm um, their financing arrangements or confirm their um, job arrangements, or even just to communicate with their employer, um, that should be allowed. It should not, it should not, uh, end the agreement of purchase and sale, but it should be enough to kind of uh, give a little bit, a little bit of breathing room, especially to a buyer in these harder times. What about the seller in the same case scenario where the seller is now going, Hey, <laughs> I'll make my plans. Okay. I sold my property, <laughs> gave you a good deal. And now you're turning around and saying you can't close. Yeah. What the heck? And that is a very good question. Now, on the other end of the spectrum, yes, the seller is in the situation where they can find themselves like, hey, I have a house and we're extending, but that means I've got to maintain it for another three months. So a clause included in there should also have something stating that uh, any amounts for maintenance or any amounts for care has to be readjusted and reimbursed to the seller. So the seller is not technically taking on the burden they might be taking on you know try to prevent them from taking on taking it on but if they can't take it on they can take it on alternatively that clause can also be adjusted so that the buyer pays for maintenance for those three months before closing so those are actually provided as an amount and that they get provided as if anything a forwarded deposit or a forwarded amount uh, through their lawyers ideally through their lawyers so this can be double-edged sword but it's really working together and any real estate deal is supposed to be a deal in good faith and everybody's supposed to be trying to be working. right a business deal should be beneficial to all parties not just the one yeah. um and that makes a lot of sense so what about rentals um i had a client calling me and saying that we bought a property um and normally we're allowed to have those renters leave with a 60-day notice um, but now because of the situation, 
the government's uh, not allowing people, like they cannot be forced to leave the property basically. Yeah. Um, and they cannot be evicted either. So uh, we've bought this, but we don't want the renters. Um, what do we do? So even before, like it, it, there should be a clause in there that the seller should act on this and it should respond to this. Right. Namely that they should speak with their tenants. Um, if their tenant says that, you know, we're willing to leave in 60 days. So they, they say, you know what, despite the situation, we should be fine. We're willing to, to do this in 60 days. They should get a written confirmation from the, from the renters and that should be provided to the uh, new buyers. So therefore the buyers know that they're getting the property without renters. Now, the situation comes where the renters do not want to leave. And this is where probably the more problematic situation comes in. In that situation, the buyer, the seller should still get confirmation whether, you know, the, uh, sell, the renters want to leave within 60 days or not. If they don't want to leave with, within 60 days, the seller needs to give a number of options. Namely that, um, um, you know, that they either leave on or before the closing day that, um, you know, or that, you know, the buyers waive, like there needs to be, sorry, I'm just trying to figure out how to phrase this in the correct way, but the- So Adrian, um, yeah. I, I get that part, okay? But this happened like in the crux of, so this lady and um, called me to get my advice because she had her own um, agent, um, and uh, she said, I'm all, um, I don't know you, but I've heard about you, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. um, now this might just go to court and we want out of this and we want to buy another property. Mm -hmm. So that's how I got to know about her previous history. Um, she's now looking to buy another property through me. Okay. But um, what is it that we could protect buyers um that get into a situation like this um and uh the renters are now like well we're scared to leave so we're not gonna because we don't have to so everything was done in good faith there's clauses in place that they have to leave they've signed it but now the government has turned around and said let's be more compassionate or you know uh, re people who are tenants are are not um you know it's not a mandatory thing for them to leave until this whole thing you know blows over in that case scenario, my thing is, what can we do so that this thing doesn't have to go to court to dissolve, that the seller too has to be, um, you know, in, in, in agreement that, okay, if that happens, then, then we'll put it back in the market for a proper, for another buyer to actually assume the, the tenant, as opposed to now going to court to fight and wasting all that time trying to get out of a contract. Well, pursuant to the agreement for sale, the seller needs to provide vacant possession. And that's what, if they're already in an agreement for sale at this point in time, they should, that should be a clause in the agreement for sale. That's kind of a standardized, I think it's usually on page three or four of the agreement for sale. Now, essentially the seller cannot provide vacant possession in this situation. That there's gonna be renters there and that's not gonna happen. So the seller will technically be in breach. So this is a, more so a seller issue. So the buyer can request that their deposit be provided forthwith back to them because they cannot meet the vacant possession by the closing date, and this is known now. That's why it's probably very good for the sellers to you know, communicate with the renters. So it's you know possibly an anticipatory breach. You want to make sure that you're not going into that situation but once again we're in the COVID-19 and this is a little bit of a unique circumstances that more often than not most lawyers will tell a buyer to say just ask for your deposit back and continue on because if you try to continue and get it try to get these renters removed the landlord tenant board is closed superior court of justice is closed you're going to be stuck for a little while so it makes more sense for you to work with the seller seller reimburse uh, the full deposit and then the buyer goes out and finds something without a renter so they can move in. So there would be a clause in places. We could put something like that where before they even sign, both parties are in agreement that if that were the case, then we should. Yeah. 
And even if, uh, like, let's say there's an existing agreement person sale right now, the vacant possession can be argued in that way, potentially. That's why that's also an option. But considering what's going on right now, and since that this is knowledge at the moment, a clause might be a good way of just kind of solidifying that if there isn't any possibility of getting the renters removed, you can at least, you know, the the green purchase treated, a green purchase sales treated as null and void and the buyers just get their deposit back. Right. So it's kind of protecting the buyers. Okay. That's good. Um, so what else do I have here? Let me see. I think we've covered a lot. Is there anything else that you feel right now is, um, that you want to advise the buyers and the sellers? Um, at this time? yes. Um, probably one of the big ones is don't panic. Um, the market is still going people are still working you know you have a mall you have lawyers you have brokers everybody's still working we're still doing the job we can still do the job digitally and i always tell buyers and sellers don't panic right now we're still open we're still doing the job we're just adapting to the situation and if there is anything it just might be a slower response time at times but it's not like anybody is not available or you cannot find somebody who can at least answer the question so I've had a number of people who have called me out of the blue saying, I have this type of situation, what's going on with my real estate deal or what's going on with uh, this because they can't even reach their lawyer because their lawyer might be working from home and the phone isn't going, isn't being forwarded to them. Uh, my phone is directly forwarded to my cell phone, so I've never had an issue. But that way, at least you know that there are lawyers who are out there who are understanding the situation, who are willing to answer very general questions so don't feel afraid that you know if you enter into agreement purchase sale you enter into any sort of real estate deal that you're or even any sort of legal matter going on or broke or anything people are still here people are still working don't feel like you're alone on this we're all doing the self isolation and we're all working hard so we're working with you thank you so much adrian um I, so you're saying that my clients or anybody out there watching this if they need any consultation if they have a question to ask you they can call you directly and you will not charge them yes um, office offers a 30-minute free consultation that's been something since uh the start of our oh. <laughs> okay. um you'd be surprised how many people call us out of the blue and just ask us a very general question we always have to state you know these are general terms based on very limited facts if you want very specific advice, we have to have a consultation, usually via Skype or via Zoom, and actually have the face-to-face -face and ask you some serious questions. But if it's just like a general question like, hey, are you open? Hey, um, you know, are, can I, and is it smart to enter a real estate deal right now? You know, a lot of people are open and a lot of, and we offer the free consultation even with legal services. So, you know, we're here. Yes, and I think it's so important right now that along with, you know, getting um, uh, an idea of what's happening with the real estate market, um, say my clients have co been coming up to me and saying, hey, Amal, what do you think is going to go, what's happening right now? Well, before this whole thing happened, you know that we were in a seller's market, and mm -hmm. I feel like temporarily we might just be in a buyer's market right now, especially because people are afraid to lose jobs, they're not going to jump in so fast. They don't want to compete against 15 other buyers. Um, and so people are like hands off. And then those people who are willing, ready, and are motivated, uh, they look beyond all this and say, well, when this thing blows over, and of course they are in a place where they can make those decisions. Um, there are some people who are very aggressive and they're actually going forward with this. Mm -hmm. So it's good to know that not only um, are, you know, are they okay, Taking, getting information from me based on what's going on in the market, the inventory, the days in the market, the price point, but also legally how they can be protected in case there's another curveball that comes, you know, <laughs> I, I, I'm hoping that, you know, the thing, you know, dissolves sooner than later for everybody's sake, for everybody's families, and we all want to be safe and happy again. Um, but I appreciate your, you know, uh, your cooperation in this for sure and and uh i'm sure your phone's going to be ringing off the hook um, I'm here and uh, i'm actually as you probably know but not many people who are viewing this know i'm actually in my office right now um i only come out if i'm not at home i'm at my office
office and I'm just doing work here. So, you know, everybody's available and everybody's still taking the time, but everyone's working hard for you, for all of our clients. That's what we're doing. Perfect. Thank you so much, Adrian. With that, I'm going to end our call today. Good. Um, and uh, we'll be in touch. All right. Talk to you soon. Bye. Bye, guys. If you have any questions, feel free to call me. This is Amal Ibrahim from Zola Realty.